Okay, thank you. And uh, welcome back to here at Just Conspiracy, where we're going to report on another crappy legal usurpation. I'd like to make a shout out to Christy Barnes. Christy Barnes asked in the comments section, so what should we do about it? What should we do about these things that we see going on around us? And the uh, the best idea that I've kind of come up with for that is we talk about it. We talk about just how insane our culture, our society has become, how it got that way, and how we fix it. And when people like you and I start to, to understand that the only way to truly fix it is by working together and creating a court of law, because having a court of law is the only way that any of these things is going to get fixed peacefully. That's, uh, that's just my belief. So if we talk about these things and we try and spread these ideas, we can, we can maybe fix it. But I really do enjoy the question. I like it. Um, it. It just reminds me that I should talk about that again. And there's a lot of reasons to think that everything's going to be okay. Everything will be good. And we'll talk about some of those maybe this evening. But tonight, we're going to... We're going to talk about how the media reacts when we have crazy, crappy legal usurpations. What, what does the mainstream kind of do? Well, you know, really what happened here is it's a tale of two trials. Johnny Depp brought a suit in the UK for the same case, and the burden of proof was easier for him there. The son had to actually prove that it was true. And, and the court found there, and we weren't allowed to tell the jury this, but the court found that Mr. Depp had committed at least 12 acts of domestic violence, including sexual violence, against Amber. So what did Depp's team learn from this? Demonize Amber and suppress the evidence. We had an enormous amount of evidence that was suppressed in this case that was in the UK case. In the UK case, when it came in, Amber won, Mr. Depp lost. I don't think it's a fair statement to say that Amber Heard was silenced in any way. And recall also, Stephanie, there was a similar lawsuit brought by Johnny Depp in the United Kingdom where he lost, where he sued um, the Sun tabloid for the same concept. And a judge in that case said, uh-uh, I find 12 separate incidents of domestic battery committed by you, Johnny Depp. The difference is you had it in front of a jury and the court of public opinion, as I write them. When you think about the allegations that were made in the UK case that involved defamation against a tabloid, the judge in that case found the allegations of Amber Heard to be credible, found that Johnny Depp did abuse Amber Heard. This jury, on the other hand, basically rejected the mountain of evidence that showed that Amber Heard, in fact, had been abused by Johnny Depp. The jury didn't have to find that each and every allegation was true. They could have found even one of them to be true. So you have to believe this jury believed that her ex-spouse, there was a previous court case which finds in conflict with this one in the UK, uh, where Johnny Depp was found to be responsible for 12 counts of assault and the Sun newspaper was awarded uh, the right to call him a wife beater. So this raises the possibility uh, that in fact Johnny Depp uh, was an abuser who is who has effectively used the courts to sue Amber Heard uh, for defamation. This is a possibility. Uh, um, uh, this is a possibility. <laughs> Maybe. See, she seems kind of nervous. And my guess is, is that she might be nervous because she has a conscience. That's just the way I might perceive that little endeavor right there. And everybody else is, they're all echoing the same thing. Over in UK, there was a judge, and he ruled Johnny's a wife beater. Over in the UK, there's a judge, and he ruled Johnny's a wife beater. But that's why over here in America, over here in the land of we don't trust government, so we break away and create our own stuff. We don't trust judges, and we like juries. <laughs> the, 
That's why we got them still. And in my opinion, what they're saying every time they're saying the judge ruled this over in England is they're saying the jury got it wrong here. I think a couple of them even say that if you listen real closely. Just think about that for a minute. They're basically saying 12 random people cannot judge a crazy bad relationship as well as they can. Did you see all the evidence? <laughs> That's a joke. That is a complete joke. Now, there's another thing they talked about. They talked about, oh, Johnny had this high, high barrier. that he had to overcome. But over in England, he didn't have the super high barrier. There was a much lower, there was a much lower burden of proof rate. Let's see them talk about it. And the burden of proof was easier for him there. The son had to actually prove that it was true. You argued in your in your closing arguments that if they found even one instance of abuse and it did not even have to be physical abuse, that they would have to find for Amber Heard. And they didn't. But when you have an outcome like you have today with the amount of damages and you think about the fact that actual malice was found by a jury, jury the fact that a public figure um, was able to prove that on the other side, the other side acted with the knowledge that what they were saying was false. Well, now, has that now basically created a burden that has been lowered for people that are otherwise not going to be public figures? And you also have an attorney, frankly, who was found to be liable for doing something on behalf of a client. So there's a lot of ramifications that are coming from this particular verdict today. Basically rejected the mountain of evidence that showed that Amber Heard, in fact, had been abused by Johnny Depp. The jury didn't have to find that each and every allegation was true. They could have found even one of them to be true. So and Renato, in last week's closing arguments, Amber Heard's attorney, Ben Rottenborn, told jurors that if Depp failed to prove that he never abused Heard, then she wins the case. He said, quote, a ruling against Amber here sends the message that no matter what you do as an abuse victim, you always have to do more. Do, do you think that's what played out here? Well, I will say this is a, the burden that, uh, Depp had was pretty substantial here. He had approved by clear and convincing evidence that Heard had actual malice. In other words, that she so she recklessly disregarded the truth here. Uh, not that she was mistaken or that she maybe exaggerated a little bit, but that she was substantially trying to lie uh, and defame him. And he did so. And he, obviously, um, his team, um, you know, his team proved that. I know there's different opinions about. Uh, why that is and whether you know whether or not uh, for example gender bias factored into that what i will say is it, you know usually in a, in a defamation case it is very difficult to meet that standard when the person is a public figure man johnny duff has this like super high burden of proof again they're kind of saying the jury really got it wrong because over in the UK, in the UK, the judge, just one guy, believed Amber. And to believe Amber, he had to discount what a lot of police officers said. He had to discount what a lot of doctors said. He had to discount what a lot of witnesses said. And he had to find Amber and her friends more credible than all those other people. Because some people like to say it's a Johnny versus Amber skit, but it's not. Just like Camille pointed out in the closing argument. Let's hear. But this case doesn't come down to whether you believe Ms. Heard or you believe Mr. Depp. This case comes down to whether you believe Ms. Heard or you believe Mr. Depp, Christy Dombrowski, Sean Bett, Malcolm Connolly, Travis McGivern, Starling Jenkins, Keenan Wyatt, Dr. Kipper, nurses Debbie Lloyd 
and Aaron Filotti, Tara Roberts, Ben King, Kate James, Kate Moss, Dr. Kolber, Morgan Knight, Morgan Tremaine, Officers Melissa Sines, Officers Tyler Haddon, Officer William Gatlin, and Beverly Leonard. What Ms. Hurd testified to in this courtroom is the story of far too many women. But the overwhelming evidence and weight of that evidence shows that it's not her story. It's not Ms. Hurd's story. It was an act of profound cruelty, not just to Mr. Depp, but to true survivors of domestic abuse. And that's why the jury substantially found Johnny more believable than Amber. And there's this maximum. It's a Latin phrase. It says, falsus in uno, falsus in omnibus. Falseness in one thing, well, we can find you false in everything. And that has been good standing common law for a couple thousand years now. If we find that you're lying to us once, why should we not believe that you're lying to us all the time? And what were the attorneys trying to argue? What were Amber's attorneys trying to argue? Hey, if y'all just found one of those stories that she made, if you just find one of the made up stories real, you can say the other ones are real too. <laughs> That's what Amber's team was literally trying to sell the jury on. That's literally basically what they said. Now, long immemorial standing maximum Latin phrase. Or, uh, hey, if you just find one of the made up stories, you can judge them guilty, make them pay. So I kind of broke this up into sections. Now, the next section that we are going to watch, it's, it's really about the public opinion, the court of public opinion with Johnny. So let's check it out which is when the judgment came down in the UK. Let me ask you about social media in this case. The, unlike any celebrity case, certainly I've ever covered or ever seen, social media was a part of this. And it was incredibly lopsided and vitriolic against Amber Heard. Do right. you think that had an effect on the case? Absolutely. You think jurors were aware of it? You they know, weren't supposed to be. They They're admonished every single day. Don't look at it. Do you think they did see it? How can you not? They went home every night. They have families. The families are on social media. We had a 10 day break in the middle because of the judicial conference. There's no way they couldn't have been influenced by it. And it was horrible. It, it really, really was lopsided. And I appreciate your saying that. It's like the Roman Colosseum, you know, the, how they viewed this whole case. I, I was against cameras in the courtroom and I went on record with that and, and had argued against it because of the sensitive nature of this. But it made it a zoo. And my, op, my, my piece basically says, the court of public opinion crucified Amber Heard before this case was even brought to the jury to decide. And that's a critical kind of takeaway from this case as well. The fact that according to Liz, and she's right, this people into this very sordid relationship that existed between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard was then well publicized, allowed a lot of the court of public opinion to weigh in. But a society that is not just interested, but actually enjoys the humiliation of a woman in the way that we've seen it, you know, not just happen on the internet, but even across conversations and, 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 and you know, the, the way that it's been portrayed in the media is very worrisome. You know, the math just doesn't add up for people to take this on as their main, you know, huge issue. Um, there, you know, women have a much higher likelihood of being a victim of domestic violence than an innocent man being accused of abuse that he did not do. It's not to say that it never happens, but it is, it is not, it is very rare. And so this backlash that we're seeing, right, this backlash is not because uh, women are equal. 
it's because they're dangerously close to being equal. And that scares a lot of people. And so they're latching on to this case in a way that, you know, really, again, reveals where we're at uh, when it comes to all of these issues that, yes, the Me Too movement has been immensely and enormously impactful for women's rights. Um, but we're still not there yet for future cases. And they're really worried about what role social media might have played in this case and if it swayed the jury in any way. Um, but as for um, the general reaction to the trial itself, um, uh, you know, that goes above and beyond the verdict. I mean, the efforts to humiliate Amber Heard um, uh, were industrial. They were all over social media. There were TikTok games, um, you know, mocking her. Um, her allegations of abuse and rape, um, you know, Saturday Night Live um, mocked her too. Outside of the courtroom um, was something I think, I don't think many of us have ever seen before, which was um, deaf supporters really taking a narrative and exerting um, a public opinion on social media and otherwise uh, that may have impacted the results of this, uh, the verdict of this trial. Social media <clears throat> may have impacted the verdict of this trial. Everybody, they're kind of parroting the same thing. Mainstream media, at least they're becoming more original now and having people have their own original thoughts rather than giving them a script. But some people are uh, uh, kind of not so good of, uh, at that. Some people are better than others. That's probably why they get paid more. But the common theme is social media ruined this. They, they already judged her. They already crucified her before the trial even went down. It wasn't fair. She didn't have a sh chance. She didn't have a shot. Um, okay. That may be, that, that could possibly be true, but the mainstream media already crucified Johnny without having a jury look at it for years, starting in 2016. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think that that's kind of what the whole defamation suit's about, in my opinion. I mean... I'm no legal mastermind or anything, but <laughs> yeah, I, th I think the defamation is definitely about the fact that Johnny, be before all of this happened, he, he was doing really well. And then it being said that he's a wife beater and he's an abuser getting posted all over media, that, that probably caused him to go through an experience like making up that uh he was getting beaten and then being found out by the public it wasn't true see if you would have made it up and it wouldn't have been true and everybody would probably be upset with johnny right now but like if you would have made up hey she's beating me at worst it's mutually abusive and he couldn't show that she actually, you know, was hitting him or something. I, I bet he would have come out of this looking really, really bad. But again, another thing this is saying is the public's just too dumb to be able to judge a bad relationship. When they're interested in it, Johnny might not have gotten a trial without everybody on the internet saying, hey, this is messed up, without having a very vocal and loyal fan base, Johnny Depp might not even have gotten a court of law. So let's absolutely demonize those people. Let's absolutely say, hey, those are the bad guys over there, and they're too dumb to judge a bad relationship. I mean, that's what I hear. I don't know what you're hearing. <laughs> now, we got this, this last clip that I recorded, punched out, and it's gonna talk about 
how this case sets Amber Heard, sets women in general, it sets all women back. This is, uh, this is just so dangerous. What are we going to do? I don't know. Let, let's hear their argument. But again, it's saying that even all the victims that believe Amber is lying, for your good, we should just let her lie and ruin Johnny's life. Because otherwise, nobody else will believe you. <laughs> That's the logic I kind of get out of it, but we'll listen to them talk about, <clears throat> about how it sets back women. And before we keep moving on, this situation, you know, about the internet being kind of immature to Amber Heard, I'd just like to say something about it real quick. I had somebody watch the video that... Christy left the comment on about what should we do. Let's talk about it. Let's get this information out there because we are dangerously close to losing the court of law. But I was asking a, a friend of mine to watch that and they watched it and they said that they didn't like the way I called Amber Turd, Amber Turd. And they didn't know a whole lot about the whole situation. So I said, well, sometimes... When somebody's just so immature, you don't know what to do with them anymore. Sometimes it kind of works if you get immature. Like public shaming has worked for thousands of years. It's been really, really effective. When public shaming doesn't work anymore, you got no other choice. You just got to get rid of them. <laughs> So, I said, I apologize for uh, my disrespectful behavior. But sometimes, when somebody's so immature, you got to kind of be immature with them. When they're making up things to laugh at, like randos, <laughs> you kind of got to make fun of them. Just my opinion. Now... Let's watch her talking about setting women back. Not. Finally, in, in closing arguments, Amber's team argued that this would send a message, that it would send a message that no matter what you do as an abuse victim, you always have to do more. You need to be perfect in order for people to believe you if she did not get a favorable verdict. What message do you think this sends? It's a horrible message. It, it's, as I said, a setback. It's a significant setback because that's exactly what it means. Unless you pull out your phone and you video your spouse or your significant other beating you, e effectively, you won't be believed. Coming to the aspect of Me Too that, that you bring up there, Martha, your article is Me Too is over if we don't listen to the imper imperfect victims like Amber Heard. Um, and that you see this as kind of a backlash to the Me Too movement. So perhaps yeah. even further ramifications that what happens than what has happened in that particular court case. Um, some of the issues that have always prevented us from being able to speak out about being survivors and victims, which is you won't be believed, uh, you don't have a right to voice it, and unless you're the perfect victim, a victim that is palatable to society and fits within whatever that stereotype is, um, it's probably best that you not speak. At first question, how is Amber doing? We saw her hearing that verdict. It took a long time to read. It was a sweeping verdict for Johnny Depp. How did she handle it? You know, one of the first things she said is, I am so sorry to all those women out there. This is a setback for all women in and outside the courtroom. And I, she feels it and she feels the burden of that. And I believe it sets women back and will have a chilling effect on women feeling as if they can come forward and uh, bring a claim against or, or even make allegations of physical violence and sexual abuse against powerful men. Because I remember that era when women did so, they weren't believed, they were maligned, uh, many lost their jobs and their careers. And I worry that this could be the outcome of this trial. 
And we're not. Um, let's talk about Amber Heard. Um, her team essentially saying yesterday's verdict is a setback. This is what they're saying uh, for victims of abuse. Is that being echoed anywhere else online? Absolutely. We're actually hearing a lot of that from the people who have spoken out. And I want to remind viewers that a lot of people are not speaking out because they're worried about getting trolled and harassed. Now, I just got off the phone with one domestic violence survivor who told me this feels to her like a modern day stoning. They're very concerned about the possible um, precedent this sets for future cases, and they're really worried about what role social media might have played in this case and if it swayed the jury in any way. Um, real quick here, um, what are advocates for the victims of abuse saying about how this trial played out on social media in general? They're they're really concerned about the fact that this could cause other domestic violence survivors to decide not to come forward, that they may fear that they're going to get sued for defamation or a myriad other things if they are to come out and speak out. So advocates right now are really, really worried about what domestic violence survivors are thinking and whether or not they will no longer come forward because of the verdict in this case. It's all because of this case. It's all because Johnny proved that his lying ex-wife was lying to a jury that no other women will be believed because all of the morals and all of the ethics that society has gained over the past 50 years, we're going to throw all of those out the window because Johnny proved his lying ex-wife was lying. And I love how she says, all these really broad statements, like everybody, everybody in the chat rooms that I hang out with just to report on this one story, they're all saying over there how scary this is. Let's listen to them. Let's change. It's really just about legislation. <laughs> I mean, there's a propaganda machine in all of this, all of this was after a jury decided what happened. After a jury clearly decided she the lion won, he should get his life back, but we don't want to make it look horrible for domestic abuse survivors, so we're going to say he owes her $2 million. I mean, it won't hurt him in the long run. We already awarded him 15 But they got it wrong. They got it wrong. And it's just horrible. It's absolutely horrible. So let's see what another writer who talks about this, let's see what they have to say about how this sets women back. Let's check it out. Investigative reporter Jody Cantor, you know her well because she helped spark the Me Too movement back in 2017 with her allegations, her reporting rather, on the allegations against Harvey Weinstein. Jody, good to have you back at the table. You're the perfect person to, to talk to this case about because there are a lot of chatter about now this is going to set the Me Too movement back. Um, that Amber Heard was, for whatever reason, not believed. What is your take on the case? Does it set the Me Too movement back? Well, you know, in many ways, this did not resemble a classic Me Too case. This kind of belongs to the tradition also of celebrity trials that turn into public spectacle. Mm -hmm. This was a very bitter divorce in which these two celebrities' personal lives kind of tumbled out into public view. There were some Me Too allegations here. There were some allegations of sexual violence. And I think the relationship to Me Too is the worry that there could be a chilling effect yeah. on women coming forward. Do you feel that? Well, the way Amber Heard was attacked was, in one sense, very familiar. There was a lot of misogyny that we've seen before. You mean by the public? Attack. By the public, and especially online. There was kind of a weaponization mm. of the reputational warfare online. There was almost this hate machine built against her. On Had you ever seen anything like that? I I had never seen it at that level and directed at one woman at, at that intensity. What did you make of a split verdict? I mean, like, he won overwhelmingly. He won all of his, all right. the counts all, on yeah. his side. But like everything else about this case, it's just messy. There mm -hmm. are not clear black and white conclusions here.
a bit. But in the court of public opinion, I mean, that's where jo the... The, I mean, this trial was conducted like a sports event that was yeah. shown live on TV yeah. with, it may have been slightly familiar to you with, yeah. with, you know, it must have been surreal watching a trial play out in that way and the cheering for Johnny Depp, but also the desire to belittle her yeah. is really, I think, the, the it, legacy and what's it, so and overwhelming. It, it seemed like Johnny Depp was the home team. Yeah. <laughs> We're cheering for the home team. And had, yeah. um, you say that the fact that Amber Heard faced a defamation lawsuit um, is scary to all women. Why so? So that's really important because even though this is a very, very high profile case, it's not singular. We have seen, seen other instances in which defamation lawsuits have been brought against women who came forward with Me Too allegations. So that's a very scary prospect for women who are contemplating yeah, making that's a what, public That's what complaint. I'm wondering. Do you think that this will hurt other women who may be thinking about coming and forward? Should that be the lesson? Watch out. Or should, yeah. is it an isolated case with its own particular details and other women should still feel confident yeah. in them coming forward? Every case is different, but I think, first of all, you're right. This was pretty singular. Most women don't have Amber Heard celebrity. They're not going up against Johnny Depp uh, right. with his fans. So I, I, I think you're right to caution about extrapolating too much from this. But when I spent a lot of time with women who are deliberating coming forward about something and they are looking in the public square, you know, years ago it was, well, what about what happened to Trump? What about what happened to Cosby? You know, like, how do I consider my own story and decisions in light of right. what they're going through? Okay. I love how all of the hosts are kind of pushing her. It was bad. And she still has the same talking points. Oh, it was decided on social media. Again, mainstream media hung their hat on Johnny being an abuser. They trusted Amber. She was so well known in the mainstream media the ACLU has asked her to be an ambassador, and even now that it's weeks after, we're going into our third week after the verdict, the ACLU keeps her. Not even Warner Brothers has come out and said publicly that they're going to replace her. And then this woman on CBS... Crappy broadcast services, I guess, maybe. What is she talking about? Oh, this sets women back. This sets women back because in these other cases that are big and high profile, the women got sued there too for defamation. But she doesn't let you know what happened. And I don't know for a fact. I haven't gone and looked at the case law or actually cared enough, but my guess is, is that we have a court of law, and they went in there, you know, the women who got sued for defamation, they went in there and they said, hey, this situation we're being sued about right now, it's being litigated in this court over here. When that court reaches a verdict... They can come back and sue us. If the facts are found that he has not done the thing she says he has done, that's when you can sue us for defamation. But that didn't happen. You want to know why? Because all of those high-profile cases she talked about, all of them, those guys were convicted. <laughs> Criminally. And just think about the message that you've just heard here tonight, basically from the mainstream. More or less, it has said, let's lock innocent people up. Let's flex the fact that there shouldn't be a court of law because a judicial officer and administrative process 
is way better than a jury judging you. We know how true that is. Let's look at some stuff on the internet. Let's see what the internet was talking about. The Depp Heard trial perpetuates the myth of the perfect victim. The myth of the perfect victim. There is no perfect victim. We have this mile high pile of evidence. But honestly, if you watch the trial, the evidence all went Johnny's way. And this was printed after the verdict. Now, if you go to No Matter Who Wins, America Has Lost, Amber Heard, and uh, the, the original MSNBC article says, The Johnny Depp Amber Heard Trial Verdict. We have all lost. And what it used to say is what all these other news places that are just parroting MSNBC. How much do you think they get paid for that? How much bread and butter, as the ACLU would put it, do you think they get paid to parrot the MSNBC? No matter who wins the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial, America has lost. That is what the actual title is. Defamation trial for Johnny Depp and Amber Heard raises concerns about domestic violence. There are no perfect victims. What the media is literally saying is it's a concern that we caught a woman lying and we could give his, a man his life back. It's a concern that because we caught one woman lying and gave a man his life back, Nobody's going to believe anybody else. Society's just too dumb to realize that maybe a woman lies every now and then, and you don't have to not believe the ones that are credible to recognize she's lying. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> this was never about Amber Heard. This was never about Amber Heard. Amber Heard trashed over NBC interview. This was never about Amber Heard. This was never about Amber Heard. Man, a lot of these places seem to have the same title. And if we go into one of those things that was never about Amber Heard... It talks. We are all shaped by a culture that casts sexual misconduct accusers as unreliable sources of information, which can lead us to misjudge those who allege abuse. Really? Really, we're, we're misjudging them. What more could we do? We gave the couple a court of law. We looked at all the legal possible evidence you could have. Did you see the trial? There was like a thousand pieces of evidence entered on the plaintiff's side and like a thousand pieces of evidence entered on the defendant's side. It took six weeks. And Amber Heard was the one who ran out of time. Johnny Depp's team still had like 10 hours left. They could have kept going for another day and a half. But they didn't need to. They had successfully proved their point. If you go look up Amber Heard, Perfect Victim, you're going to find a bunch of articles and different things talking about, oh, Amber Heard, not a likable victim. Oh, Amber Heard, not the perfect victim. They talked about that in the TV shows, the interviews. And this is one of the problems because everybody who's performing up here on the stage, all they're doing is giving you an opinion. And an opinion is really how Amber Heard got all messed up in this mix. Because she wrote an opinion. 
And it's perfectly fine to talk about opinions and discuss opinions and talk about them and discuss them. But we as a society have to think and choose whose opinions are we going to talk about and whose opinions are we going to listen to. This is up to us because Johnny Depp had an unfair representation in the mainstream media. And they're trying to say it's our fault here in the not mainstream media that he won. And we should believe all abusers even when they're unbelievable. Even when they're unbelievable. Let's look at what this article says. The jury has final say, but I'm less interested in whether Amber Heard is a liar and more interested in why so many people are invested in the idea that she might be. It's just my opinion, but you know what the Nazis found out? They found out when you keep telling somebody two plus two equals five long enough, if you make a lie really big and really unbelievable, but you keep telling people over and over and over and over, they eventually start to believe you. This is a lie getting told over and over. Why? Why is this being told over and over? To get you to believe Amber Heard for some reason. To get you to think that we should switch over to an administrative process. That we as a society should decide juries aren't real credible to figure these things out anymore. So let's switch on over to an administrative process. I'll tell you one thing, one thing that's for sure, for certain. And that is the first video I made, the one that Christy Barnes commented on, what we should do. Here's, here's one of the things that I feel like really gives us hope, is that collectively, all together, in a lot of ways, we're kind of doing it. Even though this time, this video, I've spent time talking about Amber Heard, how Johnny's been presented in the mainstream media, how he is still being presented, even after the facts are in, even after the jury has already made their legal and lawfully binding decision that not even a judge would have the authority to make here in America because we don't trust government. They are still pushing. Maybe not Amber's narrative, but the narrative that she should be believed and it hurts women that she's not being believed. And not only do they do that, the first video that I made talking about this said, hey, we should have a conversation about punitive damages. Here's the history of them. Now, they just abolished the punitive damages down to $350,000 in Virginia. Is that enough? Is that enough to punish defendants when we decide that they've done something wrong? Because the jury decided that $5 million was enough. It got knocked down to $350,000. She's still out doing this. She had an NBC interview where she talks about getting sued again. Oh, I'm afraid because a court of law took away my voice in a country that respects the freedom of speech that we do. That's why her actions had to be found with malice. This is what the jury was talking about. This is what they unanimously decided on. And not only is she running around saying the same stuff that made us all take time out of our life to watch a six-week trial. But she's still getting help from the mainstream media to put it out there. She's still getting rewarded for her actions. 
That's why, for this, I have tried to leave her out as much as I humanly possibly could. Because she's not worth our attention. And this is why I'm saying people are just getting it naturally. Because after that dateline came out, prime time spot. Least amount of ratings, worst reviews out of anything on prime time. Least amount of people viewing it. What does that tell you? I don't know what it tells you, but it tells me that as a collective, as a society, we just don't care about her and her lies. And that's the only way it's really going to stop. Because the adults, the adults in the room are letting this go on. The institutions that everybody has grown up with is letting this go on. And not only do I get this idea from an attorney on YouTube, but she kind of talks about how what has happened with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, how it really shows the monumentous failures of our judicial system, of our system of justice here in this country. The civil legal system. And what I mean when I'm talking about the civil legal system here is really this is private justice. This is not public justice. This is not the government coming in and, and bringing somebody into court, um, the state prosecuting them and, and threatening them with incarceration. That's public justice. And whether or not, <laughs> well, let's just say regardless of what other opinions we might have uh, about the public systems of justice, the bottom line is they are certainly not stepping up to give Johnny Depp any assistance here. Um, I think there is room for criticism of that. I think we maybe would have to question if the genders were reversed in this situation and uh, Amber Heard was a man outgoing and reiterating his uh, accusations uh, against a woman that he had basically just been found to have abused that that might be taken a little bit more seriously by the institutions that we trust to take care of those types of things for us. But that's clearly not happening uh, with, with Johnny Depp. And what's worse is that we have these mainstream media organizations that are enabling Amber Heard, that are perfectly happy to take all the views that they're going to get, all those hate clicks, and they're just going to ride that until ultimately people stop paying attention. But the problem with private justice is really exactly what we're seeing. Even even under the best circumstances, it really isn't that satisfying. He gets a $10.35 million judgment, but it doesn't give him his reputation back. He acknowledged his life has changed forever by this. There's always going to be people out there who, when they hear Johnny Depp, they're going to think of these accusations and they're going to think that, that he did all of these things. So you, you, can't, you can't pay pay that pain away. I mean, that's, that's something that... Um, Money is simply not adequate to remedy that. So even under the best of circumstances, it's a pretty imperfect uh, system of justice. But then as you see here, it, it, it doesn't necessarily have a lot of teeth. If she doesn't fear the judgment, if she doesn't fear enforcement, then there's no disincentive for her to keep just doing essentially what, whatever she wants to do. It's been a very telling indictment, I think, of, uh, of so many systems of justice that she's just been able to get, to get away with so much stuff for so long. So I think we can safely assume that if anybody is going to pursue this and try to get her to stop, that's going to have to be Johnny. And the question then really becomes, is that really in his best interest? 
It's not just me who has these feelings. There are people in the legal industry that see very similar things going on. Just most of them will not speak above a whisper because they're all worried about their careers. The thing that I appreciate about this the most with Johnny Depp is the fact that he said a countless number of times he was doing this to fight for his children so that his children would know the truth so that the society would know the truth and people would leave his children alone because the mainstream media demonized him so bad it brought it back to his home. And at the end of this, they just wish for you to shut up, give up your right to a court of law, take administrative due process where they can just decide everything, where somebody who works for the government can decide a governmental policy and how it affects you and your family without anybody, any third party that's not interested looking at it, it's a dangerous place to be. And yet, this process of administrative courts have taken over every single area inside of a court of law, except for this one, apparently, about defamation. But it's pretty close to taking that over, too. You saw how much they complained about her having a jury and how wrong that jury is. How long do you think they're going to keep them around? But the people, the people are naturally finding this stuff, the circus and charade in the media, the circus and charade in the courtroom. People are finding this more and more unanimously to be a joke, to be a problem and not a solution. And the more that we can get this out, the more that we can talk with each other about it, the faster we can solve the problem. Because the first step is admitting that there is one. We are just conspiracy and we just wish to conspire to build heaven on earth. One world love and peace. You know, it's kind of been a sad media landscape since the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial ended. I have no purpose. For the past six weeks, I was waking up every morning excited to turn on the live stream at 9 a.m. I was following it on Twitter and on TikTok. It was a fascinating time and it really did feel like a lot of the country came together you know, from different sides. We were all joined, making fun of Amber Turd, supporting Johnny Depp. It was a really wonderful time. I think it'll go down in the history books. But, you know, it has been a bit quiet since then. So, in classic, true Amber Heard narcissist fashion, she's back. And people are calling this a career-ending interview. But before we get into it, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you are not already, and ring that bell so that you never miss a comment section episode. Because you never know. We might have more Amber Heard content forever. She might never give up because she is a narcissist, as I said. Amber Heard sat down for a 10 minute long tell all piece with Savannah Guthrie from the Today Show. And it was as ridiculous as you might expect. I don't know, I can imagine quite a bit. But I will say, Guthrie was a classy interviewer. She asked the hard questions, she pushed when was appropriate, she was respectful. It was clear that she was not like an Amber Heard simp by any means, which made it better in my opinion. But she was respectful and she was kind, which is, you know, kind of all that you can ask for in that weird situation. We're going to watch the whole thing because there are some nuggets of gold in here. But a little context. The Today Show posted clips from the interview and then posted the entire thing. All of them are deleted now. They got ratioed so hard, people were so pissed at them that the only way that you could find it online now is if you watch the entire Today Show episode and then you have to, like, move forward to find her little segment. So... I had my team pull it. We're going to watch it here, but just know they literally wiped this from the internet because people were so angry at it. So 
That's how you know it's going to be good. Like, literally, nobody actually believes any of her BS. And it kind of is a beautiful moment online. Because regardless of political affiliation or whatever, people have come together in their hatred of Amber Heard 